What's up, YouTubers? Jose Quiñones de Cien Sudo here with a box. Corban Sabers. This is the Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi replica. One of the many that they're out there. Probably there are dozens by now, if not a hundred or more. Uh, I acquired this guy uh, shortly after joining one of the groups uh, on Facebook uh, for lightsaber. Now, let, let me tell you something before I go on. There is an incredible culture, or uh, I should say fandom, or a group, or I don't know what to call it. But it's an incredible, incredibly large group of people that are into lightsabers, uh, which is very reassuring because I thought I was the only idiot out there. But no, turns out that I'm accompanied by an incredible group of people. I shouldn't call us idiots, but you know, some people do think that we're uh, kind of childish in, in, in this affection toward, towards a piece of metal with ornaments, trying to be a weapon that will never exist, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, there are, there, there, are, there are a couple of idiots on this group, which I, I, am, I, I was blown away by how many people whine and moan about Oh, how dare you charge me $250 for a replica that is not 100% Tillian, identical to the one that Luke Skywalker used in the movie. I mean, there are atoms out of place on the scene that you cheap me, so now you have to give me my money back because it's not 100% perfect. And to me, you know, to me that is incredibly <clears throat> annoying considering the amount of effort that goes into making something like this. I mean, look at this. I mean, the box foam cutouts, and, and that's just a wimpy little detail compared with the fact that to craft something like this, this is not a 50 minute project. This is not somebody went to Home Depot and spent $10 in materials to make this. This was a lot of thought and, and sweat in programming multiple CNC machines to run this guy. So I think this was $250. If you tell me I'm gonna give you $250 to make me one of these, I'll be like, I'll see you next time. There is no way I'm gonna move a muscle. There is no way I'm gonna spend a single second of my life turning all of this material for 250 bucks because this will probably take weeks or months to make. Now, of course, if you make hundreds and hundreds of these, then you make your money back or at least you get something, but uh, do, do not underestimate the amount of effort that goes into making this. I mean, let's look at the features that we have in here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So here's the hill. This is how it comes out of the box. By the way, I have already taken this many times out of the box, so this is not the first time. I, so this is not the real unboxing, but I want to show you how this got built because this is very different on how I build mine. And this shows you the way, the, the real way in which I would have preferred to do it but I didn't so I, I I'm all, uh, slightly ashamed that I didn't do it like that but this is how it should have done so here's the hilt there are four pieces this is aluminum this is brass this is aluminum this is aluminum and this is aluminum so five pieces actually and they're all screwed in this is so beautiful right here I tell you this is this is not something that that you can do with uh, Harbor Freight tools, okay? This was obviously done on professional equipment, extremely well thought out. This is a, a, this started with a chunk of solid aluminum. There is no way you're gonna find a piece of solid aluminum or, 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 or some kind of stock that you can easily make this. I mean, this is a, a piece of solid aluminum that was bored, okay? They didn't take a pipe because a pipe would not allow you to do this part. So this solid aluminum was bored, was machined on the outside, was threaded on both sides. Right there, that piece is gonna require some thought. Here is brass with threading on the inside, threading on the outside, and again, uh, a solid piece of brass. I dare you to go to the to the to the uh, metal store and get some brass and walk out saying, oh, this was cheap. I got it for 10 cents. Good luck with that one. That stuff is expensive. Uh, not that it's like a diamond expensive or gold, but brass is not cheap. And this part here, which is the uh, the head, I guess, is what it's called. My apologies if I'm doing the, the, the names wrong. 
and then uh, the heel. Now here is a, an intriguing aspect of this. More threading on this side so that you can change the end. We're gonna talk about that, that soon. But I wanted to, to mention something important about the, uh, about the uh, pommel, what is called the pommel. If you recall from my videos, I made the pommel separate because my reasoning was if I mess up the pommel, which is truly the, the hardest part to make, then you're basically losing all of this. And they were brave enough to do all of this in a single piece, which means this was a solid piece of aluminum that got uh, turned and then milled in all of these uh, all of these angles and then a little little hole here, threading here. So this was done in the most likely a CNC lathe and then CNC mill with fourth axis. Okay. Extremely expensive pieces of equipment. You don't go to Harbor Freight and get this for 500 bucks. These are real CNC machines that were put in, in use and programmed to do all of this. But I, but I digress. What I was saying is, what if you mess this up and then you lose the whole thing? Well, you have to think about the, the concept of CNC here is that you, you're going to make a program that is so well tuned that this thing is just going to come out of the machine perfect. So you don't have to worry about it getting messed up because this program probably will run a thousand times and it will give you what you want every single time. Maybe there is a crash, maybe there is a mishap and you lose one. Well, toss that one out and just start again. So once you have the program properly tuned, you can get the part without fear of messing it up. Now, when you're making one or two, then of course, most likely you're not gonna have the program perfectly tuned because it takes way much more than one or two to, to perfect any program. That's what people don't understand. They think that somebody just turn on their computer and immediately they were churning out parts and oh how dare they charge me 250 bucks for something that has atoms out of place this doesn't look like the one that Mark Hamill had on that scene all right so here's the hilt and as I was saying there is this uh, end here notice it has cutouts for uh, if you want to put a speaker there are people that actually put electronics in size so, you know it becomes like a like a real uh, not real but uh like a prop that makes sound effects and clashing sounds and stuff like that or if you prefer the other look it comes with two of these so tremendous value i mean to me this was dirt cheap the effort that goes into making these guys is not trivial so you can have that guy and then on this side you could have you can have it open in case you want to, you know, put your, your acrylic blade with LEDs or you could put one of these guys. I'm not certain when you use each. Uh, maybe there's a different diameter for the blade. I'm not aware of all of the details on how this works. Uh, but there is a set screw here for fixing this guy up so it doesn't come flying out. Or you could use this other guy and screw it in. It just goes all the way. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, uh, but um, I'll put a video of how it looks. Uh, then, you know, that's the hilt. So this is the the handle for the lightsaber. The other aspect of it is the circuit box, which I think I have a video of how I made it. So basically I grab a piece of aluminum here on the, on the vise and then my mill went like this. And then I carved this pocket and I never went to do this part, um, so. I wanted to see how they did that. But he, he, here is a thought. I mean, this part alone, if you were gonna make, if you were gonna hire a machine shop to make this part, to make a couple of these, man, that's, that's the whole price of the, of the entire lightsaber. Chances are you're gonna pay at least a hundred bucks to make one of these, okay? Uh, machine shops are not cheap. Granted that these guys are printing this by the hundred, so that's not a fair comparison. But I want you to understand, the, the amount of complexity on this part is not trivial. You have to make this profile, you have to make these cutouts, holes, you have to make this pocket. <laughs> this, this probably three or four different processes or steps had to be put in place to make this part alone. Only one dinky little part. And then you have this guy that goes on top. Again, you gotta make this guy, you gotta make this guy. This is not something, this is not a five minute project, I tell you. 
And then the circuit board, probably the easiest part to make because you just basically go to a PCB shop and just print out a Gigantor PCB with a bunch of uh, strips <clears throat> and um, then just cut it on a shear. So that's the easiest part. By the way, funny thing is that back in the 80s, this was probably part of some computer, like an edge connector, maybe a calculator is what I think it was. <clears throat> but today, this is not very typical today. And then there are the buttons and the LEDs. Another funny thing about this, I mean, obviously everybody from my age will recognize this as cassette player controls, right? The red is record, the green is play, these are rewind buttons. I mean, fast forward, rewind button. And this is a little panel. <coughs> um, that is fascinating how today we're looking back at this. And I, I know, if you're a teenager, you're wondering, uh, what, a cassette, what, what is that? Uh, but back in my day, this is how we listen to music. Um, I mean, it's not MP3s, and even MP3s are obsolete today. Um, streaming, streaming music is what is up now. <coughs> then you have here your triangle. Um, a holder, or what do you call it, the clamp, or I don't know what's the name of this, but basically you have to open this up and put it in there. I'm not certain how you would do that without proper equipment because, uh, I mean, this is hard spring steel, so you're gonna probably have to hit this up, open it up, and then close it with some clamps. It's not gonna be trivial, but look at all the stuff they're sending here. They even have a little piece of plastic to hold the LEDs and some of the circuitry. I don't know if you have to make your own PCB to get this done, but um, buttons, LEDs, screws, and all of this, if I recall, for $250, I tell you, there is no way somebody comes and tell me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you 250 bucks to make me one of these. The amount of effort required is not trivial, but you know, most people don't realize what goes into making one of these. I tell you, this is not a 30 minute project, not even if you have the machines program. Well, maybe you have the machine program in 30 minutes, but um, <clears throat> other than that, this took many, many, many hours of design and conception. <clears throat> so here we go, this is the Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker, uh, I don't know which version. There is a gazillion of versions out there, like version one, version two. Some are called like Crazy Uncle because that's the one that showed up on, on episode eight. <clears throat> uh, it's incredible how, 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 how people have come up with uh, different names for the dif different versions, the different looks, the different aspects of it. Like if it had, oh, because on that scene it had a, a little nick in here. So that's a different one that was used on a different scene. And I'm thinking, man, I don't care about that stuff. I have a life, so uh, I I just like about I just like the fact that you know how did they machine this? It looks fantastic to me, uh, tremendous value, unbelievable. So you know if you're into lightsabers like I am, this is something uh, to look into. And by the way, they make every single lightsaber out there. Probably they sell the lightsaber of the of the little kid that got whacked first by Anakin when he turned to the dark side. I bet you can find that. Every single lightsaber is being manufactured uh, professionally. So if you have a, a big uh, a big space in your room and you want to fill it up with cool ornaments, this is probably uh, a good way to go for geeks. Geeks and nerds like us. All right, this is my review of the Cord Band Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi. Who knows what version lightsaber? If you like it, this is the place to go. Uh, but you know, there are many Facebook groups where you can uh, check them out and uh, see what's out there and talk to people that have similar interests like you. Thank you for tuning to my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna see you on the next one.